Hello my friends, I'm Brett Larkin. Welcome back to my channel and especially a huge welcome if you're new. This is a Hatha class. We're gonna keep it low to the ground, perfect class to do if you're maybe feeling a little low energy but you wanna get some juicy movement in. To begin, come on into all four. So we'll start with cat-cow. So you're just gonna stack shoulders over wrists, hips over knees. Begin by finding a nice long spine. So dip the chin. Imagine a string from the crown of the head navigating you forward and a string attached to your tailbone navigating you back. And in order to really find this, you're gonna navigate your abs up and in. So you pull your belly button a little bit towards the ceiling, not so much that your low back rounds, but it's almost like you're moving into that sensation of a rounding. So you really feel like your spine is parallel to the floor, or parallel to the ceiling. And then just glide the shoulders back Chin is slightly dipped, again, crown of head moves forward, tail moves back, and then just locate now with your mind's eye, your left shoulder, your right shoulder, your left hip, your right hip. Exhale all the air out of the body first, so we're just gonna exhale out the mouth. And then deeply inhale through the nose, filling up all four corners of your torso. So visualizing those four corners moving apart, diagonally side to side, up and down, and then exhale, let it go. Two more like that. So no cat-cows yet. We're just finding length in the spine, deep breath in. Imagining your torso like a rectangle that you just wanna widen or burst with your breath. Exhale completely. Last one on your own, inhaling super deep. Left shoulder, right shoulder, left hip, right hip, move apart from one another, and then exhale. Good, and now invite movement. So inhale, collarbones back, open the chest. Exhale, deeply rounding. Take your navel towards the ceiling, crown of head towards floor. A few more like this. Heart forward, collarbones and shoulder heads back. As you exhale, press the knuckles into the mat. Tailbone lengthens to the space between the knees, chin into chest. Three more. Good, find that neutral spine. Step the right foot forward between the hands, or it's okay if it's a little bit to the right. And just bend for a simple low lunge. You can stay right here with the arms on the ground. You can walk your hands up onto the knee. And last step, if you wanna take it a little deeper, left hand reaches up and over. Your right hand can hold the hip as you come into this little side stretch or reach all the way to the floor. Three deep breaths wherever you are. Good. Take both hands to the inside of the right foot. You're going to curl the back toes under. Listen carefully. You're going to plant that back foot Foot is at a 45 degree angle. Front knee stays bent directly over the ankle. Hand can be on the floor, holding the ankle, or elbow to thigh. I'm just gonna come into a little side angle. If you have the hand on the floor, I really want you to press the elbow into your knee and your knee into your elbow here. Good, and then inhale, reach the fingertips long. Exhale, take the hand to the hip. Good, and then inhale, reach the hand back up and over the ear. And exhale, hand to the hip. Two more, inhaling. Exhaling. Last time, inhaling. 
exhaling and this time see if you can take the hand and slide it to your low back or maybe even into a half bind holding on to the inner thigh rolling the chest open you don't have to have the half bind to just feel the left shoulder stacking over the right here last breath good and then take both hands to the inside of the leg look at my back foot the back toes are just going to point up you're coming into Skandasana, side lunge. Here, anything you choose. You can have a nice long spine. You can bend forward a little bit, letting the elbows get heavy towards the ground. You're just looking for a really juicy stretch on the inner thigh. I sometimes like to rock forward and back. Inhale deeply. Exhale completely. Last big breath here. Good. Then we're going to walk it into a wide legged forward fold. So, whenever I'm short on time, this is one of my favorite go to's. So, make sure that your pigeon toes, so the toes are in, heels are out, so the heels are wider than your toes, and then just let the upper body drop. So, you can come down onto the elbows or just clasp opposite elbows if you can't reach the floor. You can hold the ankles, anything that feels good to you here is what I want you to drop into. Enjoying the stretch in the back of the legs and then hopefully still feeling and enjoying some length in the spine here as well. So the upper back's not severely rounded. There's that length, a straight line from the tail to the crown of the head. last three huge breaths here really root down through the outer edges of the feet pull up through the thighs so the kneecaps gently lift keep the head and neck and jaw soft final breath good and now walk your hands towards your left foot and we're coming into Skandasana, opposite sides. So we're just going to let that opposite toes flex up. Your choice, kind of where you want the hands. But again, think about keeping the spine long. Although if you want to come down onto the elbows, that might feel nice too. Maybe some gentle rocking forward and back. And really hear your breath. Whenever we have a short time to practice. It's always the breath that is really the key to getting the most out of your practice. So the more you can really fuel those inhales and exhales with a lot of attention, really slow them down, the more benefit you're going to get even from a quick practice like this. Last two breaths here. Good, and then coming out via side angle. So again, look at my back foot. It's going to turn and spin the toes forward so that back foot's at a 45 degrees. The front foot's gonna spin forward so I have that nice front heel bisecting my back arch alignment. You might wanna lengthen the stance. Hand can hold the ankle, so it's a great place, level one, or even elbow on thigh, or hand flush with the floor. And from here, extend the top arm, really look down at the left knee, make sure left knee is over left ankle, straighten through the back leg, side angle. Inhale, fingertips reach forward. Exhale, take the fingertips to the hip. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale back. Two more on your own. Linking breath and movement.
Good, and the next time the hands at the back. Hip, take it, slide it to the sacrum, low back. If you can keep going, hold that left thigh coming into a half bind. Whether you're in the half bind or not, just stack right shoulder over left. Really press that left elbow into the right knee. Feel that connection. Two breaths, wherever you are. And then take both hands to the inside of the left foot. Drop the right knee. Coming into your lunge so you can stay here. Option one, just like the other side. Option two, hands come up to the thigh. Option three, reaching right arm down around and up. Big side body stretch, left hand on left hip or left hand to the floor. Three deep breaths wherever you are. Take both hands to frame the front foot. Slide the left foot back. So knees are in line and then inhale, find your up cat. Exhale, down cat round. Inhale, up cat. And then exhale, pressing back into a downward facing dog, just holding five breaths. So you can pedal the legs, spread the fingers nice and wide, feel each knuckle connect with the mat. And then look at your toes, spread the toes nice and wide. Maybe lift from big to pinky or pinky to big. Root them down, totally okay if the knees are deeply bent here. Heels do not have to be on the ground, just savoring this dog. Three more deep breaths. Step the right foot wide of the right hand. So right foot comes a little bit to the outside of the mat. Drop the left knee. So we're in a second lunge variation now. Keep the left hand on the ground. You can even maybe widen it so it's a little bit wide, moving the left hand to the left edge of the mat. And then just take the right hand and hold the right thigh. Gently spiral it open as if the right thigh were the page of a book or something you wanted to rotate open to the uh, right and then your chest follows so think of your heart like a flashlight you don't want it aiming down towards the floor you want it really aiming not just towards the sky but towards the back corner of the room see if you can find that just play with it really grabbing the thigh spinning it open last two breaths And for your final breath, if you want to reach the arm open, if that feels good, maybe wiggle the fingers. Nice. And from here, we'll just transition this into our pigeon pose. So pressing up onto the hands, heel toe, this right foot all the way to the left edge of the mat. And coming on down. And remember for pigeon, you might always need blocks or blankets or props underneath either hip. You can always do pigeon lying down on your back in ankle to knee stretch if that's your preference. Take the hands to either side of the hips if you're here with me. Roll the shoulders back, lift the heart. So take a big moment. I like to feel like kind of like a, a swan here. Inhale. And then exhale. As you come down, think of lengthening the spine just like we did in that first uh, cat cow before we moved into the cat cows tailbone lengthens back crown of head lengthens forward Stay up on the elbows just for a minute even if you can come all the way down and really feel that tailbone lengthens back see if you can feel that lengthening back all the way through the left toes right crown of head reaches forward and then from this point if you're ready you can come on down resting the forehead on the floor on the block or a prop if you have one. We'll just take six deep breaths in this pigeon to 
fully relax. Notice if you're tensing in the shoulders or jaw. And soften the face, soften the tongue. And the last two very deep breaths. Make them intentional, make them count. Really feel the body inflate with air and exhale all the way. Mm. Mm, take the hands underneath the shoulders, curl the back toes under. Come back into your downward facing dog. Mm. Pedal the legs. Listen carefully. Step the left foot forward between the hands. Walk the hands to the center of the mat. Maybe take your block with you. We're coming into that wide legged forward fold again. This time, take the hands directly underneath the face. Keep the toes in, heels out, and with the hands directly underneath the face, keep the left hand underneath the face, and the right arm is going to peel up, hold the right shoulder, take it back, and then extend the arm the rest of the way up. Here too, I want you to feel tailbone lengthen back, abs and core pull in, so it's almost like you're moving towards rounding the low back, even though you don't fully round it, and then maybe come up onto spider hands up onto the fingertips as you shine that flashlight of the heart towards the right. Last breath. Good, and then switching it out. Right hand underneath the face. Left arm comes first to the shoulder. So you kind of like peel the shoulder head back, plug it down into its socket, and then left arm reaches up. Once you're here, Lengthen through the spine. So tailbone navigates back, abs hug in. From that place of the abs hugging in and the tailbone lengthening back, see if your heart can sort of corkscrew even deeper into this twist, shining the flashlight of the heart towards the left. And hear your breathing, last two breaths. Popping up onto fingertips with the bottom hand if that feels good. And then surrender, fold forward. Inhale, come into a half lift position. So the shoulders glide down and back. You get nice and long. And then exhale, refold, bending the elbows down. Two more like that. Slow inhale. Moving a little slower maybe than you usually do. Exhale, melt. Legs stay strong, kneecaps gently lift. Breathing in, find length. And final time, exhale, surrender to fold. Walk your hands back towards the front of the mat, stepping back into your downward facing dog. Down dog, pedal the legs. Take a deep breath in. 
As you breathe out, step the left foot to the outside of the left hand, coming into that lizard stretch, second side. Take the right hand wide of the mat. Left hand is gonna hold the thigh, really grab the thigh, get some meat, and then spin that left thigh to the left. You can come to the knife edge, the pinky toe edge of the foot. You can keep the leg solidly on the ground. Think of that flashlight of the heart shining up towards the back corner of the room. Squeeze the inner thighs together here. Two more breaths. For the last breath, maybe reach the arm up. And as you're ready, take the hands underneath you, transitioning this into your pigeon pose. So the left foot is going to heel toe to the right edge of the mat. Coming down, opening the chest before we surrender. So hands on either side of the hips, maybe flip the palms even open. Again, think of those shoulder heads rolling back. Deep breath in. And then exhale finding more length in the spine as you come down. So we'll all pause with the elbows on the ground. Feel the tailbone lengthen back. Feel the right toes lengthen back. And then dip the chin, feel the abdominals engage. Spine long. Three breaths here. Just breathing into an energetic line all the way from the crown of your head and beyond the crown of your head, through the torso, through the body, going out the right big toe. From here, feel free to come on down, rest the head fully on the block, whatever feels right to you. different on this side gently press yourself up lean over to the left and take your right leg in front of you so we're coming to baddha kanasana soles of the feet touch knees wide inhale you can hold the feet or the ankles get tall breathe in and exhale fold forward just continuing to feel the hip stretch, press the feet towards one another. So there's a seal there. And then you can just hang forward, or if you've been working with a block and you wanna put the block on the toes or on the feet or on the floor in front of you and rest the forehead on a block, that's a nice place to be as well. Five deep breaths here.
Feel the sitting bones root and the low back soften. Let's stay here for another three breaths. And slowly use your hands to press yourself up. Take the hands to the outer thighs. Close the knees like a book. Reach the arms forward, get tall through the whole spine. And then from just below the navel, begin to roll down one vertebra at a time, taking your time till you're lying down on your back. Scooch forward on your mat if you need to. If you've been working with the block, place it between the inner thighs. I like to take it the long way so I have as much contact between thigh and block as possible. Make sure your heels are just grazing your middle finger. Press your palms down into the ground. Lift the hips and then see if you can interlace your fingers underneath your sacrum. Make sure to bring that pinky finger in so it doesn't get a ton of pressure. And then from here, you're going to waddle your shoulder blades together. So you're going to kind of rock to the right and pull your left shoulder blade underneath you. And then rock to the left and pull the right shoulder blade underneath you. And this should help you really fasten the hands together and maybe even get the heels of the hands touching. Press down through the feet. Squeeze the block. Send the hips towards the ceiling and the chest towards the back of the mat. Three deep breaths here in your bridge pose. Keep squeezing the block. And ideally feeling the sacrum and the low back widen as you squeeze. If you don't have the block, it's okay. Just visualize or imagine a block there. Last two breaths. Get the hips a little higher. Good. And then gently come on down. Set the block aside if you were using it. And pull the knees gently into the chest. Good. And then just let the left leg lengthen long. Grab the right knee, draw it down towards the right shoulder, and then take it across the body to the left for a supine twist. So your left hand can stay on the thigh, and your right hand is going to reach up above you and then to the right corner of the room. So I really want you to play the diagonal. You can micro bend the elbow, see what that feels like. You should be getting some nice juicy stretches along the deltoid and the muscles running in and around the, the inner arm and armpit. So reach the right arm towards the right corner of the room or micro bend the elbow. It's okay if the right shoulder blade is off the ground. Five deep breaths here. Come back to center, pull the knee into the chest. Take it long and then left knee this time. Pulls into the body. Give it a squeeze, interlacing the fingers, really pulling the left knee down towards the left shoulder so you get that gentle compression, really good for digestion. And then take the left knee across the body to the right. Left arm reaches up 
and then kind of towards that left corner of the room. So it's above you and a little bit out to the diagonal and it may feel really good to micro bend the elbow here. Really no right or wrong way, as long as it feels good. Four more deep, deep breaths. Slowly come back to center. Place both soles of feet on the mat, lift the pelvis up, and just set it back down to neutral. Draw one knee and the other knee into the chest, and then holding the outsides of the feet, pinky toe edges of the feet, for happy baby. If you can't hold the pinky toe edges of the feet, you can just hold the thighs or the outer ankles, whatever feels good. And if you want to gently massage the low back, the sacrum, by just rocking a little bit side to side. And we're going to end with that seated pranayama I mentioned. First, we'll take a brief shavasana. So once you're done rocking, just lengthen one leg and then the other leg long. Take one hand to the heart and one hand to the belly. I like left hand to heart, right hand to belly. And just drop in, close the eyes. Giving yourself 10 breaths or so here to really feel the effects of your practice.
Gently wiggling the toes and reaching the arms up overhead. Roll over to your right side. You can use your right forearm as a pillow, left hand to the mat. Gently press yourself up to a comfortable cross-legged seat. If you want to use a meditation cushion, please do. Finding a nice tall spine. We'll end with a few rounds of alternate nostril breathing. So taking the index and middle finger down, ring finger and pinky are extended, or however you like to do it. I know there's a lot of different mudras for alternate nostril breathing. Just block the left nostril, exhale out the right, and then inhale through the right nostril for a count of three. Hold, block both nostrils right at the bridge of the nose, and then exhale for three out the left. Inhaling left for three. Hold, pause, and block both. Exhaling out the right for three. Inhaling right, three. Pause, block both. Exhaling out the left for three. Inhaling left. Pause, block both. Exhaling out the right for three. Continuing this pattern a few more times on your own. Really bringing your attention to that midpoint when you hold and block both nostrils. See if you can find a pause and a gentle lift maybe of the pelvic floor. So a gentle Mula Bandha and a gentle Udiana and Jalandhara Bandha as well. So as you pause at that midpoint, the pelvic floor lifts, the abs lift, and you dip the chin ever so slightly. So there's this moment of suspension, of pause between the breaths. See if you can use the alternate nostril breathing to just channel your energy right directly into your midline by focusing more on that pause when both nostrils are blocked and the gentle lift of the bandhas. See if you can find a sense of deep stillness there. The next time you exhale out the right nostril, take both hands, palms face down on the thighs. Take a deep breath in and out. Staying here, just in seated meditation, just thinking of all of the energy from both the left and right side of the body coalescing, coming together in your central channel, that Shushumna Nadi, main energy channel that runs from the base of the spine all the way up to the crown of the head. Draw energy from the left and right side of the body into this space. And as you continue to sit here in meditation, can bring your focal point 
eventually to your third eye, that space just between and above your eyebrows. You'll hear my voice again in several minutes. Slowly begin to deepen your breath. Gently bring your hands to prayer at heart center. Press the palms together. And gently rub the hands. Take the heels of the hands to the eyes. Just press that heat, that warmth into the eyes. And then drag the hands down the face, the neck, the torso. Gently massaging the legs, the shins, and just pressing into the soles of the feet. Taking the hands in the lap, just take a deep breath in. And out. Last one together, deep breath in. And out. And from here, you can dip the chin, gently blink the eyes open, and if you like, fold forward. From my heart to yours, namaste. Namaste.